I'd like to introduce her very amazing co-moderators for today, starting with the acclaimed rapper, Fat Joe. Woo! Fat Joe is a proud Miami resident. He is a rapper, songwriter. Sir? How you doing? Here we go. Fat Joe, everybody. Rapper, songwriter, actor, you name it. Record executive, record producer, and stalwart advocate for healthcare transparency and patient rights. There you go. Power to the patient. Absolutely. Put your hands together one more time for Fat Joe, everybody. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our second co-moderator today. You may have seen him recently on screen in the new Transformers movie. His name is Anthony Ramos. He's a Grammy-winning artist. And he has been nominated for Golden Globes, Emmys. He's proud of his Latin roots, most importantly. Yo, what up? He's from Puerto Rico. Woo! And he was born and raised in Brooklyn. So ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Anthony Ramos one more time. Here we go, here we go. That's right. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Vice President Harris's visit today is as exciting as it is timely. With everything going on right now, it is incumbent upon all of us as students to use our voice, to voice our concerns to our leaders from City Hall to the State Capitol to, yes, even the White House. And today, we get to do exactly that. So, on behalf of the student body of Florida International University, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the Vice President of the United States of America, Kamala D. Harris. Well, we're just excited to be here as everybody in FIU. Uh, we're going to ask her some questions and moderate. You know, the Madam Vice President is crazy. Um, you've traveled all around the country to talk to Americans about the most important issues. This summer alone, you visited 17 states. Uh, and you have met with young leaders wherever you go from climate leaders in Colorado to gun safety advocates in Virginia. Now you've launched a college tour. Like she's really outside, outside, guys. <laughs> and uh, where well, you will travel to more than a dozen campuses to speak to the young leaders about the most fundamental freedoms. Why are you going to these college campuses on a fight for our freedoms tour? Well, let me start by thanking all the leaders who are here. This, you know, when people ask me, I do a lot of interviews, and people ask me, how are you feeling about the country and the world? When I look out at this audience, I know our future is bright. I know our future is bright. And so, first of all, let me say, Joe, it's so good to see you. I haven't seen you since you were at my house a couple weeks ago for our hip-hop party. <laughs> This is getting weird. <laughs> Anthony, huge fan, mad respect for you. And Alexander, I can't wait to see you at the White House one day very soon. Uh, so here's the deal. First of all, let me just say about leadership. I do believe that we each are born leaders. And it's just a matter of when you decide to turn that on and lead. And the very fact that the students 
who are here, one, are here at this esteemed educational institution, but are here for this convening, tells me that you have assumed a role of leadership. And so I'm first here to say thank you. I'm here to say also that I think that your generation is one of the most spectacular special that we have seen in a long time. You all were born only knowing the climate crisis. You all were born when there has been one of the worst pandemics our world has ever seen. In your lifetime, you witnessed George Floyd's murder. In your lifetime, you growing up had to endure drills in elementary, middle, or high school because there might be an active shooter. In your lifetime, you have witnessed the highest court in our land take a constitutional right that had been recognized. And what I also know about you as leaders at this particular moment in time is you are not sitting around waiting for other people to get this right. You are prepared to lead. And so I am here, first and foremost, to say thank you. And I say this as Vice President of the United States of America. I'm counting on your leadership. I'm counting on your leadership. I also am clear-eyed, and today we're going to have some real talk. I am clear-eyed that at this moment in our country, we are witnessing an intentional, full-on attack against hard-won freedoms and rights. And it is incumbent on us, then, to not passively sit by and let it happen, but to stand up and fight for what we know to be right and be true. That's why it is called the Fight for Our Freedoms Tour. It is because we all know that any movement that has been about progress in our country has almost every time been led by college students, by young leaders, and that the strength and progress of our country has been reliant on the fact that we are committed to an expansion of rights, not a restriction of rights similar to what some extremist so-called leaders are trying to do here in Florida. And so I am doing this tour to lift up the voices, to listen to the voices of very important leaders in our country, knowing that it doesn't have to be this way, and I want for you to be able to live your best life. That's why I'm doing this tour. Um, you know, I just want to wrap it up with asking, you know, our nation and, and our world face so many challenges, you know, and in this moment, how do you stay optimistic? Well, looking at this, I stay optimistic. Looking at this, really, really. You know, look, um, to be clear-eyed about the challenges doesn't mean you, you got to be depressed. It just means you got to be clear-eyed, right? And know what's in front of you. And then understand that, you know, the fight for our freedoms is a fight for something. It's not a fight against anything. It's a fight for something. And that's one of the ways that I remain optimistic. You know, my parents met when they were active in the civil rights movement back in the 1960s. My mother arrived in the United States at the age of 19 by herself from India. And I'm now vice president of the United States. I remain very optimistic. <laughs> I know what is possible. And here's the other thing I have to stress. Our nation was founded on fundamental beliefs about the importance of freedom and liberty and equality 
and justice. And so when we are fighting for these freedoms, we are fighting for the foundational principles of our country. It is a fight born out of love of country. We love our country. We believe in its ideals. We know we've not achieved them all yet, but the beauty and the strength of our country has always been our belief in who we are and our willingness to fight for who we are. That's our strength. And in that way, I do believe it is one of the purest and truest forms of patriotism to fight, born out of love of country and a belief in all that we stand for. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll finish my point with this. I have now, as vice president, met with over 100 world leaders, presidents, prime ministers, chancellors, and kings. When we walk in those rooms around the world, representing the United States of America, we walk in those rooms with the self-appointed and earned authority to talk about the importance of democracy and rule of law and human rights. And here's the thing, here's the thing. The thing about being a role model, everybody here knows this is a role model club if there ever was one. When you're a role model, people watch what you do to see if it measures up to what you say. So understand that this fight for our freedoms and by extension our democracy, what is at stake includes everything we've already discussed and our standing around the world and our ability to walk in those rooms as the greatest democracy in the world, showing that a democracy is as strong as the willingness of its people to fight for it, and we are prepared to do just that. And therein lies my optimism. <laughs> I'm very optimistic. Vote.gov. Go out there, register to vote. Because even if you follow what's going on out there, even if you want to support, if you don't register to vote, then your voice won't matter. And that's what this is all about, as well as I believe that people lead the people. So start talking to your other friends who might not want to vote and start convincing them and letting them know the importance that it, that it is to register to vote and get out there and vote. And of course, uh, you know, I'm voting for Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. 100%. Let's take a, hold up, let's take a selfie. Let's take a selfie. Let's take a you quick selfie. You got it ready? Hold up. I got to get in that joint. Come on. Trying to get this lighting right. All right, y'all. Yo, 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 yo. Vote.gov on three. Vote.gov on three. One, two, three. Vote.